Yeah. I, I hear that all these uh, musicians want to take their music off of um, Spotify. Why? Because of a... Because of, like, because Joe Rogan's on Spotify. I just, I just like the arrogance. These assholes. These self-important assholes. Because many people think, think, these maldeveloped narcissists, i.e. narcissists, are just they don't have perspective like wisdom brings perspective to people and these people think that their opinion is worth is 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 higher, is more important than 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 uh, than their monetary success. Like you have got to be a a very extremely a person of very low IQ. As Dor- as uh, Donald Trump so eloquently put, you gotta be a person of low IQ person. You must be a very low IQ person. And these people think that Spotify is going to pick them over Joe Rogan? Like, Spotify probably makes more money off of Joe Rogan than Neil Young. You know, and I'm sure Neil Young is rich. I'm sure he's rich beyond beyond count. Rich beyond avarice, but like, come on, man! You can make more money if you just if you just be quiet and stop being a uh, a seven lettered F word that sure don't mean freedom. You know what word I mean? Because they are the types. They are because they are the uh, sticks, the bundled, the sticks bundled together, which fire fuel the fires of tyranny. And most of those types of people are hypocrites. You know, it's the hypocrites which which pave the path to hell. And they are the ones that actually destroy any kind of legitimacy in the movement, too. So, these are the types of people that have no respect for... I mean, I mean they either did it because it was the cool thing to do, or they did it because they, um, because they just, because they wanted to kind of make money off of it. You know, never, never, pro tip, never do anything for, with the intention of getting anything in return, because all you're going to get is diminishing returns. You didn't need some study, some, like, study to teach you this. Um, you didn't need some study to, to teach you. That's the reality of things. That's kind of how things are in this world. There are... If you think you're so self-important over your own monetary uh, wealth, over, over your own monetary success, then that's your big problem. You think you're, you think you're the shit 
still. But you're just some, but you're just some gosh darn boomer who thinks that they know. You're just some gosh darn boomer who thinks he's with, who wishes he was still relevant and decides to push the seven-letter F word that should ain't freedom. To be remain relevant. Instead of actually being what singing, doing what he used to sing about. Instead of singing, fuck the fascist. You sing, um, praise the fascists. You know, instead of singing, fuck the fascists. You sing the praises of fascism. That's the sad part. These people are no different from the very people that they used to criticize. And you wonder why I'm not a counter-revolutionary, why I'm not not a counterculture, why I'm not a part of the counterculture. Because I don't want to be associated with those types. I know how, how this has gone downhill. The very people who scream, Screw fascism! Back in the um, early 2000s, I mean, most of those people scream, Praise the, praise fascism! Praise fascism! Praise totalitarianism! They're not singing the praise of that. So, I could care less about the counterculture. Because most people in the counterculture become the very thing they, they, they said they wouldn't be. Maybe they were those things all along. Or maybe they got caught up in this. So people falter. And people falter too. By the way, that's all the reason why I'm not a part of the counterculture. Because these are the types of people that lose perspective. Hello YouTube, it is I, the Amazing Cherry Assaultus, with another video. And today I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about, about, um, about, about censorship and, um, and some of these remarks coming out of some of these big celebrity, big name celebrities like Elvira. And so, I just find it fascinating that um, I just find it fascinating that um. That this, um, that Elvira would decide to call her friends toxic. Which, you know, because, you know, by the way, because I disagree with you, because you, because you, 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 um, say Joe Rogan should be deplatformed doesn't mean I wouldn't get rid of your crap. I probably wouldn't watch any more of your stuff. You know, that's one way, it won't destroy part of your legacy at that point. But when you start calling your fans toxic, I will get rid of everything that you have. Because if you think I'm toxic because I disagree with you, or trash, might as well be the same thing, then then I have I have no I I have no reason to be uh, your fan. And you know what? Uh, Jordan Peterson said something that really um that really um, calls these people out for what they are. And I'm going to try and find it. If I can, but I'm not able to do it.
So I'm going to do it here. And while this wait, while I wait for this to load, let's naturally read this. So Cassandra Peterson, the iconic horror personality, better known as Elvira. My heart's on fire away. I mean, it used to be on fire for her, but now it's not. Unfortunately, Elvira kind of... My heart was on fire for her, but no longer. She was kind of a cool person. I mean... And so... Cassandra Peterson, the iconic personality known as El Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, has not only become the latest celebrity to demand that Spotify deplatforms Joe Rogan. I mean, I I haven't seen Joe Rogan in a while, but you know, I just don't like this this whole idea of all. I mean, that as I said, that's one thing that will not annoy the crap out of me. That is one thing that will not annoy the crap out of me. No, no, no not annoy the crap out of me. That's one thing that won't get me to... That, no, that's one thing that won't get me to... To not watch your stuff anymore. Calling me toxic, on the other hand, because of a disagreement will get me to not watch your stuff anymore. Because I don't want to deal with people like that. Let's see if it is loaded. And... Are we finally able to go? Yes, we finally. I found it. I found it. Here it is. Here it is on uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson's uh, actual um, Facebook page. A guilty fear. You are not obligated to associate with people who who are making your life worse. And you know, I think calling people your fans toxic, yeah, that can can make someone's life worse because it's very devastating to find out that that your favorite artist, your favorite favorite personality aren't the people that um that you thought they were at the very at the very least it is better to do it behind closed doors than it is to do it in front of everyone. You know, at least have some empathy, enough empathy, empathy. Hell, hell, if, you're, if you've got empathy, you wouldn't do it at all. Actually, don't do it at all. Don't do it within private, with behind closed doors. Don't do it in front of people. Because that's this shows like this is so sad. You know, this is really depressed it's kinda of depressing to be honest. So let's read more. Joe Rogan addresses Neil Young's deplatforming from 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 Spotify. Many things we thought as of as misinformation just a short See, if only I had a copy of Fingerprints of the Gods, I would actually read a section of it. You know, there's... I think Graham Hancock talks about this, um... About how, how people called him a quack. How people called uh, the man who wrote... Let's see if I've got it on my bookshelf. Or my thing beyond my, my, my book show. Who wrote this book. How people called the man who wrote this book. A quack. For suggesting a, a comment impact. For basically talking about the Younger Dryas. In this book he didn't talk about the Younger Dryas. But he does talk about stuff relating to that. Because the thing about this book. Is it talks about the glacier melt. During during the time uh, during 
at the end of the last Ice Age, Major Ice Age, talks about that. You know, people call, called him a quack for years because a pseudo-scientist, even though he never claimed to be a pseudo-scientist. You know, people called him one. And he, he probably would have faced, faced censorship. Like... Like I I don't I don't defend these um, these ta this talentless hack in particular. This talentless, this this talentless hack here. I don't support him, and I probably wouldn't buy his music anyway, as long as he's not calling his fans who disagree with him toxic. Argue with facts, logic, and wisdom, and I will listen. After all, as, the, as some of the greatest uh, minds ever have said, the lips of wisdom are closed, except to the ears of understanding. Wisdom. Facts, logic, and wisdom. If you spout that, then I'm more apt to listen to you. But you can see... Yeah, he wanted his music removed. We've been here. I've been hearing about that for quite a while. He wanted his music to be removed. You know. Hmm. I am. I am doing this because Spotify is spreading fake information. Hmm. I. I don't mind. I don't mind if his music gets. I don't mind if this. Uh, if this, if this, if this dude's music gets taken off, it would be pretty funny to watch his uh, stuff get taken. And him and Paul McCartney, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm gonna just listen to Paul McCartney. No, Paul McCartney. I'm just gonna listen to, I'm just gonna buy John Lennon stuff. I think there's like one album. I don't know if I have all of John Lennon's music. But I have like his greatest hits somewhere on my hard drive. I have, I have the entire Beatles discography, so at least I've got that. At least I've got that, and I don't have to worry about not having um, Paul McCartney's music. Like I I don't know what I would do with the Beatles crap. I probably would hang on to it. It's on. I would have to delete all the Beatles stuff. Like, I'm going to make an exception with Paul McCartney. In that regard. Does that mean getting rid of John Lennon and all the other artists? And I like to keep some of that stuff. You know, and you know Joe Biden's uh, surgical general suggests Joe Rogan's podcast should be... Oh, cool. How? How? And Sophia's fist. Oh wait, it's wrong hand. How? How? And Sophia's face. You know, you know, Joe Joe Biden's Surgeon General is a fascist. You know, Joe Joe Biden Joe Blowjob Biden's uh, Surgeon General is um is a seven lettered. F word that sure don't mean freedom. I'm sure you guys know what word I mean. <laughs> because I've used it numerous times and I'm just getting away from using it. You know, Peterson announced her. Of course, we've got um, fellow, fellow musician um, Mitchell. Joni Mitchell, I might have heard Joni Mitchell's music before. I don't, I don't really care about her stuff now. It's like, ugh. Mm -hmm. And Peterson announced her uh, support for um, her uh, for Joe Rogan's removal. See, that doesn't bother me. I'm probably not going to watch your stuff because you're defending censorship. You're defending. You're defending the seven-lettered F word that sure don't mean freedom. Totalitarianism. 
you know. You know, she uh, stand. I said I stand. Yeah, of course. So I'm not really gonna probably. You know. So I guess I guess Graham, I guess Graham Hancock is a. Uh, I guess this man, the man who wrote this book, is a quack, even though he's proven right. More generally right that there is more to history than we think, and he is. And he goes through study after study after study, looking into a lot of this stuff, looking in, into a lot of the our 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 ancient distant past. That is just long gone. That we find remnants of. To a reference. No pun intended. The fingerprint. The little. The fingerprints of the gods. So. You know. I, I guess. I guess Graham Hancock is a hack. I guess. Um, I guess Jordan Peterson's a hack. I mean Peterson has enough wisdom to know. That people like this aren't worth. Worth your time. You know, I, 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 this person not, not worth, hell, I shouldn't even be doing this video, but I'm doing it anyway, because I'm talking about Joe Rogan's, um, people wanting to, to platform Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan's had some pretty cool stuff, people on his podcast, Neil deGrasse Tyson, probably the most mainstream guy. So, uh, Joe Rogan's, um, a hack, then. Yeah, she proceeded to, to ask followers to sign a, a moveon.org petition calling for, for Zuff. The wrong hand. Zuff. To, um, censor him. Zagostep and fools. Yeah, the poopy race, suggesting calling on on the poopy race to remove to remove the Joe Rogan podcast from Spotify now, telling them this is close to to my heart. Well, this you know, see that would just mean I wouldn't buy any of your new crap, or I won't even watch, or I won't watch your stuff on stream. I just buy the VHS tapes, whatever I can get. <laughs> you know. Yep. And I just don't, I don't care. Um, many of whom found themselves st stunned at the fact that... She, it's such a, a purveyor of uh, of the ma macabre and sexy word would call for censorship. Yeah, it's that's the irony too is that she is calling for censorship, and the whole reason why she had that character dressed in that um, in that getup was to be provocative. It's funny that the purveyors of of of, um, of counterculture have become the new. Um, the new seven-lettered F-word. Have become the new um, pushers of totalitarianism. It's sad and it's disconcerting, to be honest. You know, it saddens me. That such an important artist is doing this. You know. And of course, massive backlash... The explanation of her uh, of her position to one such friend who his initial tweet had has since been deleted asserted the Joe Rogan podcast uh, if it, of course her saying is uh, yes it is about censorship because you cannot have the truth without without the lie 
you cannot have the whole truth without without the deception. You know, a hermeticist will tell you how much of a fool you are. <laughs> it should be noted that that it's not clear whether what specific piece of writing Peterson has referring was referring to when telling the fan to read the article as the only link she provided was to the aforementioned petition which itself only features a brief description of the situation. Amidst further pushback for, from her fans, Peterson's rhetoric then took an even more insulting turn as the B-movie connoisseur proceeded to declare in a following tweet to her original tweet regarding fans, haha, who are leaving me because they preferred this information over the truth. All I can say is it's time to clean the house and separate the, the class from the trash. Yeah, um, I can't, I can't, I can't blame people who would want to leave her stuff, um, over censorship, over the whole remark of censorship. In fact, I probably shouldn't be buying people's stuff. In fact, I probably shouldn't even buy people's stuff. That does, to me, censorship and trash are actually... You know, but I but I would say but I would say that one is an attack on Joe Rogan. It's almost a kind of an attack on on, on on freedom when people call for this crap. But I would hang on to it. Sure, I'll hang on to it. But to call me trash for for disagreeing over an over an, an opinion that you think you're right on. No. You're not. You know. Would it be okay if I uh, had a podcast inviting experts. To encourage uh, people to drink to drive drunk. She further um, argued. I don't even think that's what Joe Rogan is doing even. I've seen Joe Rogan's podcast. And... That guy is pretty critical. You know, that guy is pretty critical sometimes. And so I'm like, man, this is stupid. Yes, yes, Joe, you're right. These people are just imbeciles. And we'll actually read some of Joe Rogan's um, comments too. So, so we'll read some of his comments. Like, the horror hostess then continued to engage with her fans, doubling down on her for the insulting those who found themselves at odds with her. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I, would, I don't care. You know, huge fan. I've always been since the movie Macabre Days. But I can't follow this call for censorship. Yes. And the lips of wisdom are shut except to the ears of understanding. If you can't argue with facts... Then please shut the fuck up and um and 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 just please shut the fuck up. You know that's that's my advice to that's my advice to Elvira or Cassandra Peterson or rather Cassandra Peterson. Admit like this this is stupid because people disagree with you you know where is the one where is it there there we are 
Um, what an asshole. What a fucking asshole um, she is. I, I, I can't blame people. I think these people have more a little more integrity. I'd, I'd hang on to their music. You know, no matter how polar. Simply don't listen to him. You aren't going to change people's mind. That See, this guy is right. This guy has the right attitude. Has the right attitude. Elvira does not have the right attitude. <clears throat> I debated uh, certain aspects of metaphysics for decades. And one of the key things, and it's really extremely apparent today, is that the people that want to shut you down, shut you up, and I could talk about uh, Mr. Rogan, but I'm not, but I think everybody that has two ears know knows what's been happening to him recently, and I'm not interested in discussing him, that people that can't debate the topic, they want to shut you down, they want to shut you up. Well, we have to ask ourselves the question, and whatever you think of media, there's, all media is pretty much bad, the news is pretty much uh, evil and ignorant, but nobody addresses that question. It's like, well, we know that that's going on, but what's the underlying substrate? That's the thing right underneath the superficial thing. Kind of like a beautiful person that's inherently evil and sociopathic, right? It's like, oh, what a beautiful person. It's like, yeah, totally evil, though. You know, it's very beautiful, but completely evil. It's not a person you'd ever want to know. Superficially, you would, but if you really knew that person. I've met more than a few people like that in life, and I'm sure you have, too. But nobody's asking themselves that question. These people are fundamentally weak. They can't debate. They have an agenda. Anybody that's afraid of debate, yeah, fundamentally, there's sometimes you're like, you know, someone will say something so incredibly stupid, which, you know, happens to me in comments. You know, people might say something and just incredibly ignorant, and I won't debate them, not because, you know, I, I couldn't defeat them in a debate, and debate is not about argumentation, but because it's just so completely patently absurd and I'm just insanely busy, you know, there, there, there is that exception. But on a fundamental level, when these people shut everybody down, these people that have this uh, fake power, and th they can never control people. They think they can. They have no control over themselves. But they try to control other people, and the, the tighter they grasp, the more it slips through their fingers. You know, just as one example, and of course, everything that's going on, especially, I've been seeing this ramping up for well over 15, 20 years, so it's very, very applicable today, is that these people live in fear. They, they are so self-projective of their own beliefs that they think they are their beliefs. They have this idea when you say, you know, you're wrong fundamentally, you know, facts, logic, wisdom, boom, boom, boom. Everybody today, by the way, is kind of ignorantly using the word science, it's science. And every time they say that, like a few months later or like a year later, they've been completely contradicted. I don't know, if you've been paying any attention, you'll see that that's the case. It's really, really uh, obnoxious, actually. Um, but if someone can't debate, and they refuse to debate, and the only thing they want to do is shut you down, shut you up, then they are completely spineless. They're fundamentally weak. These are people that are spiritually weak. What do you mean by spiritually? You know, we could talk about the euphemisms, what that's in reference to. But they rely on beliefs and dogma. They're part of a herd mentality. I've uh, been encountering this now for over 20 years. I mean, there's a few topics in uh, metaphysics, specifically translations of ancient Pali from the Nikayas, of which I am a consummate expert on, and many topics there within, which there's nobody else on this earth that knows more than I do about the term Anatta and Atman, what it means in context, where these passages exist. I literally know hundreds of books and verse citations in my head relational to this stuff, and these people will never debate you. They will never get in front of like a, a video teleconference where you, you know, both sides are recording, and both sides will, they, they, they're completely afraid of it. They know fundamentally that they don't stand a chance. But what they will do is they will shut you down any way and every way possible. They'll brush you off. 
She calls on Zafash. She calls on, on, on Zagushtep and Fools to do something about this. And I'm, I'm like, no. Probably going to edit out some, some stuff in this. You don't need to agree with Joe Rogan. And... Well, is he really killing people? See, I remember when, when people said, we need to do thought from dead, dead conspiracy theorist uh, Alex Jones. I remember when people were arguing that he should be deplatformed. You know, if you want to not be polarized, don't listen to the guy. You want to not be polarized, don't listen to Joe Rogan. Or not Joe Rogan, Alex Jones. If you don't want misinformation, and then encourage people to not listen to Joe Rogan, rather than calling for censorship. Because that's, that's, that just makes you look like an asshole. And you are an asshole. You're demonstrating this. You, all you people calling for Joe Rogan to be deplatformed are assholes. You know, literally would not uh, exist without the right to free expression. Yeah. And when these these goose and fools defend censorship, it's. It's really annoying. It just annoys the crap out of me. I'll put the original article in the in the description. Why well, played? You know, it's like. Literally would not exist without. And I'm like, I'm like, look at these these assholes. This <laughs> is Captain that weird. Like, why another user suggested listening to the podcast and stuff and seeing what was said in a response, noting that Rogan was merely asking questions that a lot of people had. You know, I would have listened to the podcast and stuff and seeing what was said. Joe is simply asking questions. You know, uninformed health experts, blah. He spelt their views from the rooftops are potentially very dangerous. You know. And, and I've always said them that censorship is the con artist. Is the con artist? It's not the con artist. Um, but there's a there's a there's a saying that I have in here that I want to talk about. But there's a scene that I want to talk about that I have here for people. Whom, yeah, I, I'm writing an entire article on this, but I've got a scene here for, for people. Totalitarianism on the extremes, wanting bugs podcast banned. Censorship will always come from the totalitarians. So we just remember that totalitarianism exists on the extremes. But moralism seeks to mystify the sin, thinking that doing so will discourage the sin. It is always the tyrant that creates more sinners than saints. Let that sink into you. Let that sink in. She has become a moralist. And she was a she was part of the counterculture. 
And now she sided with the moralists. With the little push pushers of with the little pushers pushers of the ghost step and nonsense. And nowadays besides morality is one of the sources of bigotry, yeah. Especially when you're um when when you can't argue facts, logic, and wisdom. You have to argue like name calling. And so it's just funny to hear hear all this kind of stuff coming out of her mouth. You know, as as of, of this article's writing, Peterson has continued to engage with both supporters and critics of her um, stance on Joe Rogan. Most recently explaining to one fan who was disappointed at being called trash for not agreeing with her with with her that in an obvious backpedal, trash equals people who never were never fans to begin with. That's what that's my response to her. That's actually my response to her. She's she is no longer. But let's listen to um but let's listen to uh, Joe Rogan's response to Neil Young. I want to find that on YouTube. Because I want to actually listen to his response, not his this Let's do that one. So let's look up a Joe Rogan, Neil Young. Because I think I saw the video. Because I want to listen to his response. Like to me, Neil Young is just like, eh. So let's look it up. Here it is. Hello, friends. I wanted to make a video to address some of the controversy that's been going on over the past few days. And first of all, to say thank you to everyone that sent love and support. I truly, truly appreciate it. And it's been very nice to hear from you. I wanted to make this video, first of all, because I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, specifically about two episodes, a little bit about some other ones, but specifically about two, one with uh, Dr. Peter McCullough and one with Dr. Robert Malone. Dr. Peter McCullough is a cardiologist and he is the most published physician in his field in history. Dr. Robert Malone owns nine patents on the creation of mRNA vaccine technology and is at least partially responsible for the creation of the technology that led to mRNA vaccines. Both these people are very highly credentialed, very intelligent, very accomplished people, and they have an opinion that's different from the mainstream narrative. I wanted to hear what their opinion is. I had them on, and because of that, those episodes in particular... Uh, they, those episodes were labeled as being dangerous. They had dangerous misinformation in them. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. Like, for instance, eight months ago, if you said, if you get vaccinated, you can still catch COVID and you can still spread COVID, you would be removed from social media. They would, they would ban you from certain platforms. Now, that's accepted as fact. If you said, I don't think cloth masks work, you would be banned from social media. Now, that's openly and repeatedly stated on CNN. If you said, I think it's possible that COVID-19 came from a lab, you'd be banned from many social media platforms. Now, that's on the cover of Newsweek. All of those theories that at one point in time were banned were openly discussed by those two men that I had on my podcast that have been accused of dangerous misinformation. 
I do not know if they're right. I don't know because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely. I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. Whenever I get something wrong, I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. Um, I'm not interested in only talking to people that uh, have one perspective. That's one of the reasons why I had Sanjay Gupta on, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who I respect very much, and I really enjoyed our conversation together. He has a different opinion than those men do. I had Dr. Dr. Michael Osterholm on at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, he is on President Biden's COVID-19 advisory board. I had uh, Dr. Peter Hotez on, who is uh, a vaccine expert. I'm interested in finding out what is correct and find, I'm also finding out how people come to these conclusions and what the facts are. Now, because of this controversy, and I'm sure there's a lot of other things going on behind the scenes with these controversies, but uh, Neil Young has removed his music from the, the platform of Spotify and uh, Joni Mitchell and uh, apparently some other people want to as well. Um, I'm very sorry that they feel that way. I, I, I most certainly don't want that. Uh, I'm a Neil Young fan. I've always been a Neil Young fan. I'll tell you a story at the end of this about that. One of the things that Spotify wants to do that I agree with is that at the beginning of these controversial podcasts, like specifically ones about COVID, is to put a disclaimer and say that you should speak with your physician and that these people and the opinions that they express are contrary to the opinions of uh, the consensus of experts, which I think is very important. Sure, have that on there. I'm very happy with that. Um, also, I think uh, if there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. Uh, I would most certainly be open to doing that. And uh, I would like to talk to some people that have uh, differing opinions on those podcasts in the future. We'll see. Um, you know, I do all the scheduling myself and uh, I don't always get it right. This, these podcasts are very strange because they're just conversations. And oftentimes I have no idea what I'm going to talk about until I sit down and talk to people. And that's why some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out because I'm literally having them in real time. Um, but I do my best and they're just conversations. And I think that's also the appeal of the show. It's one of the things that makes it interesting. Um, so uh, I want to thank Spotify for being so supportive during this time. Uh, and I'm very sorry that this is happening to them and that they're taking so much heat from it. And so now the, the Neil Young story. <laughs> I'm going to leave the Neil Young story for you guys if you want to listen to that. But you got his point. Like, like I don't know why, but you... But this is just, like, really stupid. And I, I hope, I hope uh, Cassandra Peterson rethinks her position. Not... On calling people trash. That I think is like the biggest problem that I have with her. For disagreeing with her. You know. You have a right. You have a right to uh, say that a person should be censored. But you're going to take heat for it. And I, I mean that's her opinion. She thinks Joe Rogan should be. But she's also actively pushing for him to be censored. So. So that just, that adds another level of like, yeah, I wouldn't support this artist anymore if I were you. Um, I'm probably never going to be, be able to, to delete my entire Beatles collection because it means I lose out on John Lennon. I heard, heard Paul McCartney is doing this too. That's about all. Peace out.